I am Gökçe Tuna, Head of Exploration at Accelerator Lab Turkey. We need to be doing quite a few things, but uh, a good starting point is, is to deal, to address the issue of changing demographics. So we have um, an aging population in most parts of the world, uh, a shrinking population as well. Um, and um, the skills that are relevant today uh, will not be relevant tomorrow. We'll talk about soft skills and knowledge. Uh, which are increasingly in demand uh, today and will be in the in the near future. Uh, we talk about ethical considerations because of the technological advances. They will also be very important. Um, another one is uh, emerging sectors. Um, we see them um, coming uh, and, uh, and we talked about those as well. And finally, um, we have the public sector and services, which uh, most people seem to think is, is happening in the background, invisible, but actually uh, they will be affected a lot by the disruption to jobs and skills. My main message, I think, would be to start thinking about these things today. There's no point in you know, dealing with a disruption when it happens, as we saw with the pandemic. You know, it's a shock, a major external shock happens, and then you just try to respond to it. You design a response, you implement that response, and then you just expect that response to work. So that, that's, uh, that's a lot of things happening at the same time. So for me, the, the biggest recommendation uh, in the report, you mentioned it in many places, is is to, to start thinking about these things and, and doing something about it as well. I hope that you know people will listen to this and, uh, and take it seriously that, you know, in five, ten years time or even sooner, there might be other crises and, uh, you know, bigger shocks. I'm Drashko Drashkovic. I'm the head of exploration of the UNDP Accelerator Lab. I'm calling from Belgrade, Serbia. Foresight is about uh, better thinking and better decision making, not about better pre predictions. We can only predict general territories where new opportunities lie. We foresee that um, uh, it will help uh, decision makers to, to, to have a strategic uh, view of the future. We want uh, our readers to be able to make better strategic decisions, uh, to have an ongoing strategic dialogue on future work, uh, to create capacity for future readiness and preparedness. And we would like to increase people's ability to imagine different futures and willingness to take action uh, towards uh, realizing the preferred uh, future. But the nature of work is changing dramatically. We need to rethink the concept of jobs, create a new social contract and transform education towards uh, fast and lifelong learning. Uh, we are part of the Accelerator Labs network uh, that is thrown all over the planet and I think the last 18 months have proven that it makes no difference if I'm here or there. Even for hosting physical meetings, I prefer meetings by taking long walks by the river or hiking the trails. I believe most employees will come back to the office in a part-time capacity. A crucial consequence of the pandemic related to future work is that it has shown that physical location is not bound to economic opportunity. Uh, this will expand the number of good jobs in the world while also dramatically improving quality of life for millions. And I really hope that the cultural shift towards experimentation more widely across our societies may prove to be one of the best and most lasting after effects of the pandemic. I'm Leila Seydzadeh. I'm head of exploration for UNDP Accelerator Lab, Azerbaijan. we started to identify uh, signals for entrepreneurship part, we realized that entrepreneurs were at the forefront because uh, they were more agile by nature, uh, ready for uh, any storms and, uh, and kind of uh, having this more flexibility and agility uh, to, to change because uh, entrepreneurs uh, manage their own business and they can um, can make changes faster. And uh, we found out that actually uh, startup companies 
we're much more ready for all these changes like working from home, uh, uh, remote control and all the stuff because they do it by nature. Uh, during um, the COVID uh, outbreak, we all realized that we need to use technology more and to look into innovation more proactively. But uh, governments and policies are not ready. So introducing this uh, entrepreneurial skills to these um, uh, areas that, that were never considered to be entrepreneurial uh, is the new trend and is, is important to consider. Looking into this and focusing on this and uh, developing more financial tools is important with a specific focus on female entrepreneurship because may, uh, we all know that women suffered a lot as well as their uh, businesses and more female businesses were affected because women had uh, all of a sudden more responsibilities. Governments and uh, other uh, non-profit organizations need to um, look closer to entrepreneurship, uh, to entrepreneurial mindset and to entrepreneurial practices because this situation demonstrated that uh, entrepreneurs are more ready. I'm Yevgen Kalimnik from UNDP Ukraine Accelerator Lab, and I'm a head of exploration. Our report uh, approaches inclusiveness on workplaces in a very, very broad sense. We're not only talking about in being inclusive to people with disabilities, we're not only talking about gender parity, we also speak about creating workplaces that foster inclusivity, which means not only changing the hiring practices, but also changes the office space, the way to make people comfortable in working there. We recommend to for every employer, every organization, and also policymakers to consider such issues as gender parity, um, trying to streamline the uh, consider those considerations into the hiring process. That's because there are still a gender stereotypes where women can work and cannot work. The last year, remote work has opened tremendous opportunities, especially if we speak about people who have problems with mobility. So that's something that should be clearly taken as, a, as an opportunity and grasped by organizations working in this area. I am Muzaffar Tilalov. Uh, I am head of exploration at the Accelerator Lab in Uzbekistan. There are several very important changes uh, we foresee uh, in the coming perspective. First of all, it's about uh, the influence of digital economy, digital platforms in how we uh, perceive the work, but also changes in the way we evaluate work, the performance evaluation. Uh, because of all these changes, uh, so there is need to uh, review this um, procedures, review this uh, paradigm um, in some ways. On the other side, you know, there's a tendency of remote work, tendency of uh, virtual offices, which was uh, like picked up a lot uh, during the COVID pandemic, but we will think this will stay uh, this still for uh, for a much longer period, and this will become a, a permanent uh, uh, phenomenon. Also, the issues of social protection, uh, which are like uh, accumulating, and they should be solved at some point because the traditional social protection models and the the ways the work is changing are like. Uh, creating this uh, tectonic mismatch. The share of gig workers uh, are growing everywhere in the world, uh, faster somewhere, slower somewhere, but the general tendency is like uh, gig economy is uh, growing everywhere. Uh, traditional social security networks are not coping with this uh, new uh, phenomenon. And uh, a lot of uh, gig workers are actually not covered by any kind of secu security, social security um, protection. We have gone through uh, COVID pandemic and uh, 
uh, life before COVID and after COVID is, is different, difficult to compare. We have been in this work from home mode uh, for a long time. And uh, we saw the potential of uh, uh, potential also uh, challenges of working from home. And we saw it, uh, how to say, in our own skin. The, a lot of the issues we raised in the report uh, are, are somewhat uh, experienced by ourselves in the form of like uh, influence of technology or the uh, possibilities of remote work, uh, um, social protection issues, ethical issues, uh, work-life balance issues related to work. So we have we have kind of uh, experienced at, at all this at, at some degree. My name is Ariana Drinic and I work as a Head of Exploration within the Accelerator Lab of UNDP Bosnia and Herzegovina. I thought that uh, it's only natural for the report that has been written during the pandemic um, begin with a section that deals with the phenomenon that urges us to reflect on the past and reimagine the future of work and all other aspects of life that are intertwined with our work and life. So we observe like signals such as reduced access to healthcare, education, public services and work that have only intensified the issues um, related to the gender, social marginalization, exclusion and inequality. The term new normal, uh, the term that has been imprinted in our lives ever since the start of the pandemic, um, demonstrates that our world will never be the same. In general, um, the latest research has shown that COVID-19 accelerated, let's say, three groups of consumers and business trends uh, that are more likely to persist uh, in the future, which are like uh, remote work on virtual interactions, e-commerce and this uh, mushroom effect of digital platform businesses and deployment of automation and AI. We are in effect a learning lab and we have to learn at speed and then um, transfer that knowledge uh, to the others that are not directly part of the Accelerator Lab network. The COVID period, it was also the period of introspe introspection and reflection and everything that uh, was happening around us um, made us um, think more about how we see ourselves uh, and our future of work in next 5, 10 and 20 years.